Full body training has been around for a long time. However, it is only in recent years that it's become popular again. But are there any real benefits to full body training as opposed to other splits? Before we get into the science of full body training, there are some clear benefits that need to be addressed. A full body split normally prescribes just three training days, leaving you with four rest days each week. Now I know what you might be thinking, that's a lot of days off, but that isn't necessarily a bad thing. If you think about it, our muscles only repair and grow when we are at rest. Training is actually catabolic as you are breaking the muscle down, whereas during your rest days, nutrients rush to the muscle in an anabolic fashion. On top of that, it's clear that a split of this nature is perfect for those who have a busy schedule and can't make it to the gym five days per week. The full body split tends to lead to a greater work-life balance and so makes perfect sense for the recreational lifter, beginner, or even serious trainee who leads a busy life outside of the gym. This should also then, in theory, lead to an overall greater degree of adherence and we all know a training program is only as good as your ability to stick to it. Thus, from a psychological standpoint, this split shows great promise. But what does the science have to say? One study published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research compared one day versus three days of resistance training per week with volume held constant. Although both groups experienced similar increases in strength, the group who trained three times per week experienced significantly more muscle growth. What does this mean to you? Simple. The frequency at which we train each muscle group matters. Now, before you decide to start hitting your biceps seven times per week, consider this. A recent meta-analysis by Brad Schoenfeld concluded that frequencies of training twice per week promoted more muscle growth than once per week on a volume equated basis. However, they also added whether training a muscle group three times per week is superior to a twice per week protocol remains to be determined. Now before you ditch the idea of training a muscle group three times per week because you're unsure of whether or not there is any added benefit, consider the fact that this meta-analysis only accounted for higher frequency with volume being equal. That said, training at a higher frequency can be a great way to accumulate volume once you've reached a certain threshold in your training. Lastly, the most overlooked point in my opinion is specificity. The principle of specificity states that to get better at something, you need to practice that thing and practice it often. For example, let's say you're following a bro split training chest once per week and your goal is to improve your bench press. Now let's say your friend is running a full body split and thus trains his chest three times per week. Who do you think is going to improve on the bench press quicker? This is the power of specificity. Practice makes perfect, especially if you're a beginner trying to learn the movements, training them two to three times per week is going to be more beneficial for you. So now that we know why a full body split might be a great split for you, what is the best way to structure one? To best learn to structure one, let's quickly look to the fundamental movement patterns. Horizontal and vertical pushing exercises. These target the pecs, shoulders, and triceps. These are essentially any movements that go into shoulder flexion, horizontal adduction, and elbow extension. Horizontal and vertical pulling exercises. These target the back, traps, spinal erectors, rear delts, and biceps. These are essentially any movements that go into shoulder extension, horizontal abduction, and elbow flexion. Squats. These are a knee dominant movement targeting mainly the quadriceps, but also the rest of the lower limb musculature, for example, hamstrings, glutes, adductors, and calves. Hinges. These are a hip dominant movement targeting mainly the hamstrings and glutes, and these are mainly hip extension based movements. 
and lunges. These target the whole lower limb musculature, taking the front leg through loaded hip extension and knee extension and the back leg through loaded hip flexion and knee flexion. Given that there are three days and three big compounds, squat, bench, and deadlift, each day will start with one of the three and then from there you're just looking to fill out the previously mentioned movement patterns. Here's my three day full body routine. Day one, upper body focus. Bench press, four sets of six to eight reps. Pro tip, screwing your feet into a fixed position and utilizing leg drive will allow you to produce more force. Lat pull down, three sets, eight to 10 reps. Pro tip, avoid excessive lumbar extension during the movement. Overhead press, three sets, eight to 12 reps. Pro tip, make sure the bar is directly over the wrist and the wrist directly over the elbow to ensure you're in a strong pushing position. Dumbbell goblet squat, three sets, eight to 10 reps. Pro tip, brace before each rep to help improve intra-abdominal pressure. Dumbbell RDL, three sets, 10 to 12 reps. Pro tip, keep the dumbbells as close to your body as possible throughout the movement. Day two, lower body focus. Barbell squat, three sets, six to eight reps. Pro tip, drive your knees out to engage your glutes and produce more force. Hip thrust, three sets, eight to 10 reps. Pro tip, if you set up correctly, you'll know at the top when your shins are perpendicular to the floor and your shoulders and knees are in line. Seated shoulder press, three sets, 10 to 12 reps. Pro tip, sit with your lower back firmly against the bench throughout the entirety of the lift to avoid excessive arching of the back. Remember, this is a shoulder workout, not an incline chest press. T-bar row, three sets, 10 to 12 reps. Pro tip, initiate the pull with your elbows. Dumbbell reverse lunges, three sets, 10 to 12 reps. Pro tip, keep the dumbbells close to your body to improve balance. Day three, full body hypertrophy. Conventional deadlift, three sets, six to eight reps. Pro tip, focus on technique over weight. No ego lifting. Incline bench press, four sets, eight to 10 reps. Pro tip, place the bench at a 45 degree angle for better upper chest activation. Incline dumbbell row, three sets, eight to 10 reps. Pro tip, pull in an arc towards your navel leading with your elbows. Front squat, three sets, eight to 10 reps. Pro tip, keep your arms parallel to the floor, otherwise the bar may begin to shift forward, causing you to lose your balance. Dumbbell split squat, three sets, 10 to 12 reps. Pro tip, drop directly downwards and avoid a full lockout at the top of the rep. When it comes to direct arm work, I recommend throwing in a few sets at the end of each workout for a bit more volume. Although the high amounts of pushing and pulling will provide enough stimulus for substantial arm growth, especially in beginners, a bit more volume certainly won't hurt. As for the mid delts, because they're not getting much secondary involvement during other movements, I'd recommend throwing in some direct work throughout the week. Not sure what mid delt exercises will give you the best bang for your buck? Watch my video, Top 3 Mid Delt Exercises for Wider Shoulders, link in the description below. Did you find this video helpful? If so, click the like button below as it'll truly help out the channel. If your training and nutrition are in order and you're looking for an extra edge, be sure to check out my science-based supplement line. Each product was created using scientifically proven ingredients, all clinically dosed and guaranteed to produce results. 
you want to check those out, head over to musclemonsters.com forward slash supplements or click the link in the description below. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. Peace.